Hey everyone, welcome back to BDG Reviews, night 9 of 31 Days of Horror. Uh, like I told you last night, uh, today I went and saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre on the big screen for the first time. Now, I've always loved Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's, it, it's, a, it's a piece of cinematic genius. Um, I've watched it many times on DVD, many times on VHS, many times on Blu-ray. But this was, this theatrical experience was a little interesting because I found myself not necessarily, not really note, well, I don't even know how to put it. Let's put it this way. I've always hated the character of Franklin. I hate him with a passion. But seeing it in the theater, I didn't hate him. In fact, I genuinely felt sorry for him. Didn't stop me laughing my ass off when he got the saw, but you know, that's, that's, is what it is, right? You know, um, I also noticed, which is kind of funny, the fact that Leatherface did nothing wrong. Now you're probably, you're probably thinking like, what are you talking about? Dude's cutting people up with chainsaws and wearing their faces as masks and everything. Don't get me wrong, he's very, very twisted, but when you actually look at, like, when you really sit there and look, what's he doing? He's in his house, he's doing some work down in, like, the basement or wherever the hell he is, um, and these people just keep coming into his house. You know, they're not invited, they're essentially trespassers. Who are invading his house. Now we know Leatherface is not all there. We know he, he's, you know, he's a couple of a couple of cans short of a full <laughs> a full cupboard, if you know what I mean. So, you know, how would you expect a character like that to react? So I don't I honestly I don't I think I don't think Leatherface did anything wrong. Now Hitchhiker and Cook those are different stories altogether. Um, they definitely have some issues, <laughs> to say the least. But it's weird, you know. It, it. I saw things in this viewing that I'd never even considered before, really, you know? I mean, I always... Like I said, I always hated Franklin. I always thought he was annoying as hell. For some reason, watching on the big screen... I don't know if it was, like, the the higher resolution picture. I don't know whether it was the sound or something that did it. But, I don't know. I, I just... I, I liked him more. Which is weird. Really weird. Yeah, so, also... Seeing this on the big screen, this movie just... Drips. And what I mean is, you sit there... you. And you can almost feel the the heat, and like it, can, you can almost like imagine like the smell of what everything would be like in there. You come out feeling dirty. I've said before, you know, that Texas is one of those movies that you watch it and you, and you feel like you need to take a shower afterwards. I've never really noticed it as much as I did this time. And I really noticed it. I was like, ugh. You know? Like, you you, you, you get out and, like, you're, you're unconsciously, like, kind of... Like, you want to get, like, the dust off you and everything. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> yeah. So, that was my theatrical experience. I will definitely say, if you get the chance, go see Texas Chainsaw in the theater. This 50th anniversary, like, screening or whatever is, from what I know, it's like the, the, the Dark Skies, like, 4K release, you know? So it's like that, that version, and it looks phenomenal. How awesome it is to actually see, you know, Sally pushing Franklin in his wheelchair, like, in, in the dark and not just see, like, a little bit of light or whatever. You know, you actually see them, see them, like, struggling to get through and everything. It just... It works. 
complete S-Class film. I've said before, S-Class doesn't necessarily have to be the best technically, but it has to have something special that just hooks you. And Texas has always been that. Now, seeing it on the big screen, I'm just blown away by how awesome it looks. And I can only imagine how it must have been back in the day. Like, going in to see this completely blind. You know, no, like, just, you know, having seen, like, you know, the ads in the papers and everything. And I've just gone into this and be hit with this complete devastation that is TCM. It would have been awesome. So, yeah. Uh, that's my review. Uh... Like I said, if you get the chance, definitely, definitely go out of your way to see it if you can. Because it's definitely worth it, and it's just, it's just a phenomenal movie. It really is. Uh, yeah, so, uh, anything else? I don't think so. Um, like I said uh, last night also, on the 12th, I think it is. I'm recording these a bit ahead in advance. Right now, it's the 4th. So, you know. There's that. So, on the 12th, um, I'm going to be seeing uh, Nightmare on Elm Street on the big screen. So, I'll be doing another one of these for Nightmare on Elm Street on the big screen. It's one of those things. I, I know the movie inside and out. But I've never had the chance to experience it on the big screen. And honestly... My only real experience with Freddy Krueger on the big screen was uh, Freddy vs. Jason, which, you know, okay. And the remake, which I saw twice, and I actually really like that movie. But, you know, less said about that, the better. But, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the man, Robert Englund, up there on the screen you know, chewing the scenery. It's going to be a blast. So, yeah. Uh, I'll try to, you know, continue on along with these reviews. Obviously, um, we got we got some more. <laughs> we got an entire month of them. So, look forward to it. Uh, that's it for me. See you tomorrow. <laughs>